Charlie Gregoire with Redbird. It's always great to see you here at Oshkosh and got an update on your K35 simulator that's going to make it probably easier for folks to really get a more in immersive experience when they fly. Yeah, it's actually uh, compatible with all of our motion devices and the SD as well. So the FMX is the MCX is the SD. Uh, it's an expanded visual package. It's a Horizon Pro package is what we're calling it. It adds two extra monitors behind the pilot and behind the co-pilot to give you almost a 270 degree view. Now where it was stopping halfway down the wing, now you can look back behind yourself and really get uh, better visual out of your sims. And it's compatible with old devices, so customers that have those devices, we have a retrofit package, we could drop it right into your sim. You know, I've always noticed when I've been in a simulator, at least most that don't have a full wraparound presentation like that, that you do lose a lot of the immersiveness and you expect to see the airport over off your left side and then suddenly it goes away. So this really takes all that away. It does, it does, and it opens up a whole new uh, ability to really do circling approaches uh, far off of the, no the normal runway heading as well. You can keep that airport in sight well behind your wing now. Now you've got a couple of other updates as well, mostly to do with some of the, uh, the desktop models, which are going to be a little bit more affordable for people than perhaps one of the big full motion sims. So what's going on in the desktop models? We wanted to start uh, offering peripherals for home sim builders, for those who are building their own sim at home. They have a computer, but they need a good high quality yoke or a good high quality throttle quadrant. We've been shipping the Alloy RD1 rudder pedals for some time now, and they've been very, very popular. We're adding to that line two different throttles and a yoke, a home yoke as well. The TH1 throttle is a single engine throttle. The TH2 is a twin engine throttle, and the yoke is a Cessna style, GA style yoke. They come with an interchangeable, adjustable mounting arm, so it can be either mounted, affixed to the top of a desk, slung under a desk, or you can take them off all together and slide them into your own enclosure that you build with uh, threaded screws on the sides of it. So, Where does the desktop sim fit in in the, the overall training scenario? Well, I think, you know, for some time, pilots have been building sims at home and learning there before they ever step into a flight school and learn, or while they're going through a normal flight training program, going home and practice, practice, practice there at home. This enables them to do that with controls with peripherals that are very realistic, feel just like the airplane, and it really enhances that for their home training. And finally, the VTO has had a bit of an update as well. It has. The VTO here is a new and improved VTO that we'll be rolling out to the market now. Now it's, it's got the Robinson R22 and an R44 configurations for it, as well as the old the Bell 47 one. So it's just like our FMX, like our SD, like a lot of the fixed wing sims that we build, it's interchangeable. So for a school who operates maybe multiple helicopters or needs something like a Bell 47 style or that Robinson control style, which is quite unique to that manufacturer, they can do that in the VTO now too. So what's on the horizon, Charlie? Well, we have a new uh, version of Parrot uh, th that'll be rolling out to our customers here in the, in the coming month. It was something that we announced at Migration a, a couple of years ago, the idea of being able to control the basic parameters within your sim simply by asking the sim to do it, by voice control. So a student who's in there or a pilot who's in there alone without an instructor doesn't have to pause the simulation, reach over to the instructor station, try to queue up, uh, let's say, zero visibility or a thunderstorm. He can simply key the mic and ask for a thunderstorm storm and Scarlett's going to give it to him. So. All right, Charlie. Well, thanks very much for taking some time to talk with us. Always appreciate uh, talking with you here at Redbird. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Aero TV is brought to you by Are you stall smart? Ever since Orville and Wilbur took to the skies, pilots have been taught that the more airspeed you have, the better off you are. But over the last 100 plus years, we've learned that's not always the case. Take stalls for example. The common belief is that if you have sufficient airspeed, the aircraft won't stall. The fact is, an airfoil always stalls at the same critical angle of attack in relation to the relative airflow, regardless of airspeed, configuration, or weight. Learn more at AspenAvionics.com.